So, Chuck. Yeah. Have you ever thought about the international date line? I'm going to say that uh, with uh, great certitude, no, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of a weird place, you know? You cross just one spot on Earth's surface, and it's then it's yesterday or tomorrow. Right. Right. And it's the, the same time, but a different day. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's a little creepy, right? It's a little weird. It is. I just want you it, never thought about that. I, you know, because to me, I mean, I get it that we're in motion, and so that's why there's got to be different times. But at, I'm going to be honest, it's one of those things that I never get right. And I'm okay. talking about here on this continent, North America. I'm not even talking about leaving our shores. Okay, you're talking about you don't get time zones right. You I time get zone them. Challenge. I screw every single time zone up, no matter what email. No, even when they explain it to me, and then okay. I still screw it up. So I think I have an aversion. F for what it's worth, what prevents me from screwing it up is I rederive time zones from first principles almost every time I think of them. So I say, okay, Earth is rotating west to east. The sun, therefore, rises first for everyone east of us. So everyone east of us has to be earlier, uh, has to be later than us than the ones west of us. So I, I reconstruct that in my head so that I get it right every time. See, you, I am too busy for that. <laughs> time is valuable to you. Time is valuable, man. That is too much time thinking about time. <laughs> okay, so watch this. So watch. Uh, do you remember who was the first to circumnavigate the globe? Um, that was the man who went around the world in 80 days in that balloon. <laughs> that's the. That's exactly not the person I'm talking about. So, uh, so uh, Ferdinand Magellan. Right. Okay. Uh, this is after Columbus and after a bunch of other voyages to the New World from Europe. Uh, he goes around the world and returns to the port that they sailed from. Wow. Okay, and I think it was actually port in Portugal. Uh, but it doesn't matter for what I'm about to describe. So anyway, right. so they, they, they leave Europe and they head west. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's a scribe on board named Antonio Pigafetta. Okay, I think he was a wealthy. I think he was a wealthy nobleman who was not part of the crew. Not he was just went along joyriding, basically. Okay. okay, but he kept but he kept very good records of what was going on. Oh well, yeah, that's that's easy to do when you don't have any work to do on the ship. <laughs> exactly. And so everybody he, else he is kept... lowering the boom and hoisting the mizzen mast, and you over there writing writing it down. Isn't that lovely the way you did that? Oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> oh. The men. Can you show me the that again? Were, that was so. Exactly. <laughs> what a knot! What a great knot! What do you call that knot? I'd like, I'd like very much to make a notation of that particular knot. Man, that was slept. basically what this guy did, Damn. and he kept track of who died on board because disease would go through the crew, and at some point, Magellan was killed by by natives of on on an island that they arrived at, and. So Magellan did not complete the voyage because he died, okay, Damn. en route. But the, the ship made it, as so did Antonio Pigafetta. Of okay. course. You know Antonio's going to make it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Today I was extremely crestfallen as Magellan himself <laughs> fell to the ill will of some natives. <laughs> However... I shall press on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so here's what happened. So he goes west, and you keep track of what's called local noon. All right. So when is noon? It's when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. Okay. Okay. Oh, and and that's the middle of your day, and that whatever day that is, and he's marking these days on his calendar. Okay. Cool. And and as they keep traveling. He keeps track, and he's good at this, okay? He's a wealthy, educated Italian nobleman, and he's good at it, okay? They come around the world and come back. He thinks it's Wednesday. 
and everyone there thinks it's Tuesday. Uh -huh. He can't believe it. He's and he's writing. Uh, I think they're pulling a trick on me. That right. they want to fool me. That uh, they want to fool me. Then he went to check other people, and everyone says it's Tuesday, whatever day of the month it was, oh, and right. he's still thinking it's Wednesday. And he said, I kept very good notes. I don't know what happened here. And it's just sitting there in his notebook. The confusion of a nobleman's scribe. And it is laid bare the discovery of the need for an international dateline. That's fascinating. Because there's no need for it unless you're actually going to make the trip. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. Like, do you and I give a rat's ass what, what's in the center of the Pacific Ocean? Exactly. Right, right. It doesn't matter. But if you're going to make the next trip, you're going to make that trip, you need to know it. And he discovered it by accident, which wow. I thought was just so... Uh, it's the kind of things you discover when you're very good at... Uh, when you're very careful in your observations and in your data recording. Yeah. He was being a scientist without even without knowing Without even it. knowing it, Yeah. Correct. And then, of course, uh, for weeks, he still walked around like, come on, man, seriously, what the heck? <laughs> come on. Come on, you can Stop messing me. with me. Can, stop, 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 stop messing with me. It's just us here. Come on, seriously. <laughs> it's Wednesday, right? Just it's us. Wednesday. Come on. How'd y'all all get in on this? How did, who, come on, who was? Was it, was it the king? Was it the king? Because he said... <laughs> He said, "Would not get back, right?" Come on. <laughs> he said it to on. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he pinned up a broadsheet in the center of town and said, Psst, "Don't tell anybody." Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, that's funny. So anyway, and of course, if you go the other way around the Earth, you would be you'd be a day behind. Right. So the point is, if you go west, you're chasing the sun because the sun sets in the west. Right. Right, so if you're going in the direction the sun is, right. and so you are adding a whole day to your life as you go around that other people are not enjoying, and so and so I'm just I put it out there. I don't know how many people know that story, that but is... it's 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 in the notes of Magellan's voyage kept by Anton Pigafetta. Clearly, there was no reason for there to be bias in those observations that he made. He's just checking local noon, sunrise, sunset, and he's counting days. But in other places in his writings, he talks about there was a disease that afflicted the crew, and many of them died, and they had some natives from the island that they befriended and came on board. And when they de if you die on a ship, you know, you know what you do with the body? Uh, I would say bury it at sea. Because, you know, yeah, dead they bodies just toss it over not, me. yeah, they're not very pleasant to be around, dead bodies. N yeah, not on your ship. As, next at, to your not food on the ship supplies. as they're rotting next to your food supply. Right, exactly. So you, you toss it overboard. And there he writes carefully, and he says, oh, and uh, natives and other non-Christians floated face down, and all the Christians floated face up mm. towards heaven. That's because they is were in his going account. at, they're going at... First of all, how do you know what's in their heart? Ha ha, you don't know this, but guess what? I was actually a Jewish person. There you go, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Big Feta. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I converted. Yeah, now why am I floating face up? <laughs> so, you know, statistically, I guess that could have happened that way, or what, right. would your clothing do that? But he was deeply religious, as were so many um, European explorers right. back then wanting to convert the world to not simply Christianity but Catholicism specifically, and and so this was a this is also in his writings. So basically, if you're going to evaluate the work of someone mm -hmm. who's an acute observer, right. you want to ask: Could they have a bias of any kind before you go into what it is they write? Right. And if he's deeply religious, there could be a religious bias. And you have to watch for that. But he's not going to have a Tuesday, Wednesday bias. You don't expect no, that. exactly. Right? And, and by the right, way, right. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, it's really not uh, very much of an accomplishment for your particular deity to allow your dead corpse, uh, there's no other kind of corpse, <laughs> to float one way. See, the real deal would be like, we threw the Christians overboard and they started to swim. <laughs> well, they popped uh, back up and landed right, on the deck. Came, right. <laughs> Praise Jesus. 
<laughs> Jesus, or, or, Jesus wins or they never got, Wait, or they never got sick in the first place. Ex- there you go. That's even better. <laughs> okay. no, they all, all died. Li- I'm not going to say that God li- favors you. <laughs> If he's killing your ass yeah. at the same time well, how do you as know he's God, killing the natives. How do you know God loves you more than me when, you know, your people die just like my people? My people float face up. <laughs> well, what is this? Soap? What are we talking about here? Soap. We're talking about soap? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? They're still dead. They're dead. I'm pretty sure they would have thrown you overboard whether, oh, whether or not you were dead. Let me tell you something. Before we left port, my ass would have been thrown. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of humor not accepted by at, at, by, at the court gesture Ooh, level. Let right. me tell you something. The, the, Off with his head. They probably wouldn't. <laughs> let me tell you something. They probably wouldn't have thrown me overboard. They would have tied a rope to my foot and dragged me behind the ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's everything you ever knew. Want to know about the international dateline? That is so cool, though. By the way. By the way, we could have put it anywhere in the world, but we had this convenient Pacific Ocean, which is one third of all the world's longitude, but it has to line up with the prime meridian. So that, because it's the opposite of the prime meridian, and that all worked out because Greenwich, England, all right, if you extend the line around the other side of the earth, it goes right down the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And you got to avoid some islands that are all, you, you don't want part of your country to be on a different day. So right. if you watch, you look at the, if you look at it, it, I think it has to accommodate Hawaii. It bends Does a little, it over a little to the side and it comes it? back. It's got a little, okay. It's got a little, the little, little, you know, some movement because it's at the end of the day. Do you really care what you know the, the precise location on Earth? Yeah, if you, especially if the twenty-four you're... time zones are highly fungible, right? I mean, the the Eastern time zone is not exactly where the line would be. You exactly. include the states that want to be that, part that of that want club. Want to be part of that? Yeah. Right, right, and hardly anybody lives in the mountain time zone. And, and why, uh, do so that's like... why, why do we have it? Why do we have mountains? Stop! <laughs> Let's let the I'm people sorry. have their mountains. Colorado, let the, don't, would I'm you stop? Sorry, but stop. Why do we have mountain time? So what? What I'm saying is that has the lowest population, right? And so uh, it's also very narrow. So I, I don't know if it's a TV uh, schedulers, whatever. That that's you know, they give the time and then the slash central time, right? Right. So that right. main time is East Coast, West Coast, and then Central time. They don't get. They, nobody reports Mountain Time. Nobody reports Mountain. <laughs> yeah, that's why did I you ever know notice why that? We have it. No, because did you no, notice they don't report Mountain Time? No, they they, no one, they they have to adjust on their own. Who's there? No yes. one's there. That's why. Yes, they, a few people <laughs> live in Mountain Time. Yeah, there are a few right. people. I know. The same as like the 20 mile radius of Manhattan, right? But still, people live in mountain time. The okay. same. Montana, right. Utah, okay. Colorado, All right. Arizona, okay. New Mexico. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Whatever. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mountain Time people, send all your hate mail to Chuck. Yeah. How right. about this, Mountain Time people? Get a new time zone. There you go. And then we won't have to have this conversation. You won't be mad at me. I'm doing you a favor. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Oh, by the way, a quick one. There was a TV show. I forgot what network it was on. Zach and Cody. Okay, it was, a, it was like a, was a, a like Nickelodeon a show for or like, Disney or something. Yeah, it was, like we had one of those, Disney or Nickelodeon. They had an episode where... They, uh, they were on an ocean liner that crossed the international date line, and it, it, they turned it into like a, like a Groundhog Day, uh, reliving the the incident thing. So every time it went across, it's like the the, fl- it the, the ship flipped back and forth. It reset, and then they all the events are happening again, and they got to replay it. So people think magical things happening there, but it's a completely arbitrary place where we put it. Nice. We could have put it right down the middle of Manhattan if we wanted, but that would have just been weird. Yeah. I'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a whole nother date line. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Very good, Chuck. All right. Uh, we got to land this explainer. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Thanks, Chuck, for being there. Always a pleasure. Uh, your personal astrophysicist offering yet another Star Talk explainer. Keep looking up. Bye.